up and running and Billabong is loud. Hello and welcome to the Villa Park Podcast. It's me, Rich, and I'm back with your instant match reaction to Aston Villa 1, Zrinski Mostar nil. And all I can say is, phew, we got out of jail there. Um, 94th minute winner from Super John McGinn rescues the three points for Villa and uh, in what could have been an extremely frustrating night or what was an extremely frustrating night, we managed to uh, to get the victory that I think will um, will take us on further and give us some real confidence um, into the f- further into the Europa Conference League. So much much needed victory, very very important. And uh, yeah, we'll go through some of the main points of the game, and I'll give some of my opinions on certain players and and how I think we we will hopefully take this result on to to further uh, victories in the Conference League. But before that. Please hit the like button. Uh, Show us some love, please. Uh, On a night like tonight where we've got out of jail, 94th minute winner. You've got to like the video. You've got to subscribe if you're new to the channel and help us on the road to to 3,000 subscribers. Um, We're on the road. We're very close to 2,500. So look, we'll be be almost halfway to 3,000. So uh, yeah, get us there and um, smash the like button, smash that subscribe button. Um, So yeah, um, starting lineup. I think I think we were talking about whether um, uh, whether Emery would make a lot of changes. Another mixed side, so you know Martinez came in uh, in goal instead of Olsen. Concert right back, Carlos Longley and Dino at left back, and then the midfield three of McGinn, Dendonka, and Tielemans, and then Zaniolo, Bailey, and Duran. And I think what caught us out, well, not caught us out, but where we struggled a little bit was the formation that. Um, uh, Zrinski played was quite effective against us and they were obviously going to defend they were obviously going to try and catch us on the break but we couldn't we couldn't work you know that they tended to have an extra man in midfield I know he pulled um, Zaniolo into the, that middle area but we just couldn't get the ball out quick enough through our own poor play and Zrinski's good play we couldn't get the ball out wide uh, wide enough quick enough and uh, and isolate them one on one, and it was just too ponderous, too slow, and um, and some of the you know some of the first half performances, um, you know that midfield of McGinn, Dendonka, and Tielemans just couldn't get the ball uh, moving quick enough, and uh, and I thought Zaniola had a very good game, but in the first half was maybe receiving the ball a little bit too deep and trying uh, having too many players to beat and a similar similar scenario for for Bailey but we weren't finding him quick enough we weren't finding Dina quick enough and um we were trying that one extra pass or that one or two extra two two extra touches and i felt like uh, Duran while he's very very effective coming on in games where players are maybe that little bit more tired um and he's he's coming on to cause a little bit of havoc at the start of games or he's starting games he's he hasn't got that movement he hasn't got that quality in terms of um you know playing off the shoulder um and um, and that sharpness in terms of you know one touch and then pass and he, he wasn't quite giving us enough options up front to to play off and um yeah we struggled first half we had a couple of huff and puff chances but ultimately Zrinski had the better chances you know Martinez made a great save um the only real highlight was Zaniolo's overhead kick which came out of nothing and um and the keep made it and then the keep had to make a save but going in at nil nil you know in Europe maybe it's not the worst uh worst performance but it's um it left us with a fair bit to do and, and gave Zrinski something to hold on to you know they would have been absolutely buzzing with nil nil at half time um and um and it meant that um it meant that Emery had to bring the changes and Watkins came on um Matty Cash came on and Douglas Louise came on at half time changed to a three five two um 
and I thought we looked much more threatening. Bailey on that left wing back slot, but essentially a left winger. Cash at that right wing back slot, essentially a right winger. And um, and Zaniolo more central, playing more off Watkins. Uh, and we were shifting the ball quicker. But the problem is, is if you don't score in that first half, you don't score an early goal, you give yourself, um, you put yourself under pressure and then we started snatching at efforts, you know, hitting the ball straight at the keeper, you know, um, uh, scrambles in the box that weren't quite falling to us. And um, you get, you're leaving yourself with a lot to do. And it looked like we could have played for a week and not scored uh, 27 shots, I think it was. We'll have a look at the stats in a minute. But ultimately, the players kept going, kept going, kept going. And uh, Matty Casho, I thought, had a very, very good uh, second half when he came on, really threatening. Uh, he seems to be playing really well at the moment, putting a great cross. And, uh, and John McGinn uh, glances the header home, and it was a lovely header. Um, and uh, sends the crowd wild. Um, before that, we could have made, we had a shout for a penalty. Ref gives a penalty, but I think that would have been very, very, very harsh on on Drinsky. And full credit to them, you know, they defended really well. Um, and um, and it's sometimes it's about just grinding them down. But I do think we needed to shift them about quicker. We needed to switch the ball quicker. It's too many passes through midfield, then out wide. It should have missed out that man and, and gone straight out wide and trusted our players a little bit more, trusted our touch a little bit more. Um, and that would have pulled them all over the place. Um, but yeah, like I say, if you don't get that early goal, if you don't put them under pressure early, you're always going to be, um, you, they, they get more and more confident. You, you know, you get more and more desperate and ultimately then you give yourself a lot to do. Um, let's just have a quick look at the at the stats. So McGinn gets man of the match. Uh, oh no, it's, it's, it's an obvious, obvious point. Um, but, you know, in terms of stat statistics, you know, the, the Villa players had some good, some good statistics, you know, 8.3 and players getting 7.9s, 8s, because they didn't give the ball away a lot. We just didn't move the ball quick enough. Um, uh, and um, yet yeah, subs came on at half time, as I said, Cash, Louise, Watkins, Bertrand Chore came on as a late substitution. Um, and look, all the whole momentum was Villa basically throughout the whole game 75% possession to 25%, 27 shots on goal, three uh, for the other, for the opposition, nine on target from 27. I would, you know, is that I don't think that's quite good enough. Um, you know, one in three essentially on target. Um, and uh, and one it, and, and again, you know, th one on target for for Zrinsky. They had a real big chance. We didn't really create any big chances or miss any big chances. Five hundred and sixty-one passes um, shows how much we were ponderous on the ball. Fifteen corners um, and a couple of those corner routines were just woeful. Um, a couple from Louise at the end that were that were threatening. And I know um, Diego Carlos had a couple of headers that. Um, you know, the keeper did quite well with, but they were straight at him. So it was a frustrating night, um, but we got there in the end. As I said, McGinn, 94th minute, lovely header. Uh, and I think that takes a lot of pressure off us in this group stage because uh, with the best will in the world, um, teams would have, you know, everyone's expecting Villa to walk this conference league. And we haven't got experience in European competition. We haven't been in European competition properly since, I think, in group stages since 2008. Um, not many of these players have played in Europe. Um, obviously, some have played international football, but European competition is different. And when you're playing against teams that you're expected to beat, who especially at home, they're going to play 10 men behind the ball. They're going to try and catch you on the break and um, and they're going to frustrate you. And that's what we've got to deal with. Um, so I do think that getting that late goal will really, really um, go a long way to giving us that confidence to take into the group. Every team's on three points. Um, so the next couple of games are really vital. AZ Altmar away and then home in a double header. If we can get four to six points out of those two games, uh, we'll go a long, long way to, to getting qualified out of the group. So, yeah, much, much needed win. In terms of performances, I, like I said, I thought Cash was good uh, when he came on. I thought McGinn kept going. A little bit concerned with Yuri Tielemans. Um, in terms of his effort, I thought he kept going all game, but his his distribution was poor. And um, I just think he needs to settle down a little bit and just find his place. I was quite impressed with Zaniolo. I thought he kept going and and um, I think he's getting stronger and fitter as it goes on. And he just needs a goal. I thought he, he had some really good efforts, but um, just needs a goal. I thought Longley got into the game, you know, didn't have a lot of defending to do, but I thought, you know, looks confident moving forwards with the ball. I think Carlos needs a little bit more time on the pitch. Um, 
and Dendonkolo really concerns me. He is um, he's lum he's cumbersome. He's a bit slow, not quick on the ball, and um, and yeah, we're going to have to be really careful going into the Wolves game if if Bubakar Kamara is not fit because. You know, we're going to go into that game, you know, with, I guess, with Louise, Tielemans and McGinn in that midfield three. And uh, they, you know, Tielemans really needs to step up. You, you see the difference now when Louise comes on in terms of controlling the game, in terms of confidence, you know, and, and Tielemans was playing with that confidence in pre-season, but doesn't seem to be doing it at the moment. So we need to see a little bit more from him, but pleased to see him kept going and keep working and keep working and keep working. He needs to build his fitness up, but that comes with games. But I'm hoping that he can um, he can show us what he can do. But yeah, Dendonka concerns me slightly, and you know you could see that Emery was quite reluctant to bring players. He made the triple substitution at half time, but was quite reluctant to make changes. So I'm hoping for players to come back fit. That 90 minutes will do Bailey some good, um, and hopefully he can be um, an option, whether it be starting or off the bench on on Sunday. But great win. It's so great to get that win, that that monkey off the back in terms of a win in in Europe, um, and um, and yeah, we can move on to the next game, and um, yeah, with much more confidence and and fantastic from uh, from Super John to get us through, um, guys. There'll be plenty more content. We've got match preview on Sunday to uh, for Sunday's game to come. Uh, obviously massive game against Wolves uh, and then match reaction to Wolves fans forum, talking tactics, all that jazz. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and hit your notifications. So you know, when the shows are coming up, hit that like button on your way out. If you haven't on your way in, um, go off, enjoy your Thursday night after a great win. Um, thank you for watching. And as always, remember, we all follow the Villa. Thanks everyone. Oh,